So the only thing we have to do now is of course get the bin tag and stuff like that off and then we can mount that on the other plate and then meanwhile, uh, while waiting for the other panel or whatever to get shipped, we can get all this cleaned down. So hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Now in today's video we are going to put on some more suspension parts and that's gonna be awesome so basically what's gonna happen is we're gonna install a few things like the center link the tie rod ends and maybe the sway bar to like mock up the suspension if you will so we're gonna know if the thing's gonna fit we got two angles we got two angles yo so let's start off by installing some suspension parts shall we and then maybe we're gonna do something else for the cars today i i have no idea but it this thing gotta get on the road soon. I'm dying for every single week and month that that the car just sits here, you know, it's it gets more and more annoying. I just wanna get out and drive the car, yo. Bah! Bah! We're dabbing. That's a thing still, I think. I don't know. I'm not really hip with the kids anymore. <laughs> First, we gotta get some pop. So we're gonna start by installing the, uh, the idle alarm, then we're gonna go, you know, tie rods, then send the link, and then, you know, just further and further and further. Uh, so, let's jump straight into it. So guys, here's a quick unboxing of the shocks that we're gonna use. It's QA1 adjustable shocks. Uh, basically, you can have them all soft and nice for when you're driving on the road. And then you can also make them all half for your pro touring or drift events. So basically, you have your uh, sheen right here for your adjustments or whatever. Uh, for the front shock, uh, six clicks are drag racing. So basically, 13 clicks are like a mild aggressive handling, and then 18 is like dead hard Formula One suspension. So you even hit a rock, you'll feel that shit right up the spine, man. So first of all, we got the hopper right here. Now, if anybody are building an F body out there and I don't know doesn't know that, uh, like I guess the way that these bushings go on and stuff. On the bushings you have a small diameter uh, thingy grommet thing right here and a small one. The small one goes uh, like to the frame or whatever because in the frame there's a small hole so basically it kind of rests in there in that little hole. Then you're gonna need one of these uh, spacer thingies right here. I have no idea what they're called in English. And then you want the small side up to the frame because it faces the frame. Then you basically put it on right now the shock. So it's underneath here and up through and then it comes through up here at the top as you might can see. And then when you have it at the top, you're gonna flip the other bushing around so it faces again the frame into the hole right there. And then you have one of these spacer plates, bushing plates thing here again. Remember there are two sides to this. Uh, I mean, pretty self-explanatory, but uh, down there. Then you have a big knot that you're gonna use for tightening down the whole thing. Okay, so we're just gonna do that by hand right now. So there you go, very nice, very damn nice. And then you have the small knot right here, which is basically gonna be your counter knot to lock in the other knot so it doesn't back out or whatever uh, when there's vibrations. Now here at the bottom, basically, uh, you're gonna have your control arm where there's made like this circle or whatever around here where the spring sits. And then there's two like hooks or ears or whatever coming out here uh, where a bolt goes through and then on the other side of the control arm there's a knot that's gonna hold it in. Uh, we don't have the arms right now so uh, we're probably gonna have to wait till they come but for now I'm just gonna put uh, the knots on here so I, I know where they are. And after all, if you do really like what you're doing, it doesn't matter what it is, you can get the planet you can get to become master of it. The only way to become a master of something, you really it. It's your boy, that spindle delivery, yo. <laughs> hey, 
And you said, let the be light. Now the only thing we're missing uh, for these spindles are the new bearings and uh, then we're also going to paint them. So the first thing we're going to do is paint them with the leftover paint from the frame. Which of course is BHT y'all. Let's get it man. So I actually had two bottles left uh, uh, of the epoxy paint from the frame. So And we also have one down here and basically we're going to paint uh, the spindles. Now the spindles are already masked off from sandblasting, you know, with this very nice uh, duct tape, you know. So basically we're just going to paint uh, yeah, everything around it, you know. We're just going to blow it off and grind away some of the last things that I want to like grind away. <laughs> Come on, just dry already, damn it. Eh. <laughs> so after the first coat, uh, we're gonna get the second coat down uh, and then we of course also gonna flip uh, the spindle so we can get the backside of it. Now I'm not quite sure yet if I'm actually gonna run the dust covers cause they kinda look ugly, you know, but I mean again, they are covers for the dust, but I don't know. Let me know down below if this is a bad idea and there's gonna be brake dust everywhere, which is probably will. Because I have racing uh, brake pads and they make a lot of brake dust compared to street ones. So uh, I might have to run it anyway. Let me know, yo. Is this still a thing though? God damn it. Bottle flip, yo. Tip number one, Uno boy. So I'm currently planning on painting my inner tie rods as they are silver or grey, or uh, not the same color as the other steering parts, and I basically want uh, everything black on like the frame, the steering, you know, tie rods and stuff like that. Now when you're painting stuff like this and you have cool stuff like a brass or something, you know, circle or something. I don't know, just something that's very hard to mask off. You can use something like, you know, a bearing grease, a, just some kind of grease actually, to put over the spot where you don't want to get paint on. Because then the paint is not gonna stick, which is pretty smart. And then after the paint is dried up and everything like that, you can take a, I don't know, a paper towel or something, and then you can wipe the grease off right here in the center, and you're still gonna have that nice golden, whatever color there is in there, you know, uh, which is real smart. Just something I just thought of while painting this. I, I was like, masking up circular things is the worst thing with tape. So we use this other method, uh, so yeah. I'm gonna paint the inner tie rods now, uh, the inner and the outer tie rods. The only thing that's not gonna be painted on the steering are gonna be the adjustable tie rods sleeves from QA1 plus the jam nuts. They're gonna stay in nice uh, billet aluminum because uh, it looks cool plus there's a, there's a little logo on and you know I gotta represent the, pr uh, the brands you know on the car. We out here looking for sponsors, y'all. Tip number two. Tip number two. Basically put a little wire or something uh, through your, your, your item or around your item and then you can hang it up somewhere so it becomes a lot easier to paint. Cause you know, if I painted this on the ground, I would have to like turn it around, lay it on different sides and you know, it would take forever to, uh, to get this thing painted. So put it up. Tip number three. Tip number three, uh, put on the knot. If you have anything with like some frets on, because it, it's gonna be a lot easier to keep paint out of the frets. So I know that the the, the castle knot or water uh, and the cutter pin goes in around this area. So I put on uh, the castle knot, so there's not gonna come a lot of paint on the on the frets and stuff, you know. Then it's gonna be a lot easier to fret on. And then when the thing is done, you basically just dry your grease off the middle right there. Then you still have the nice golden circle. There we go guys, four tie rods in a row, ready to get put on the count. So thank you guys for watching today's video. If you did enjoy, don't forget to smack a like and a subscribe. 
down below uh, more content are gonna come on the fibroid soon as we are starting to get more parts and stuff like that. Uh, the lower control arms are gonna arrive next week. Uh, then we're gonna install the spring, the shock, uh, gonna get mounted to it. The spindle is gonna come up and probably we're actually gonna throw wheels back on the front end and Mike gonna start to actually be able to push the chassis around so we also can get sandblasted the cowl panel up there and everything. So we're making progress guys, it is very nice, very nice. So uh, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in another video.